Hey gang, how you doing? I had a request to do this video, which is my get home system. Uh, basically has two parts. This in front of me here is the short term within the city, just outside of it, less than a day to get home. Um, this is a med kit that I keep in the Jeep. I used to be an EMT, so I don't feel comfortable without having a handful of gear on me. Um, so I've put it in there because for the, uh, for the big kit, I would no doubt add this to it. So let's show you guys this right now. So all in that's 14 pounds. Okay. And that includes the three pound med kit. The extended kit which includes sleeping, shelter, and more food, and resides in this 511 Tactical Rush 72 bag. Here's another 25. It's actually about 24.8, but who's counting? So, First things first, let's get rid of that. Those boots are Solomon, Gore-Tex, Thinsulate lined, warm, great traction, awesome winter boots. This is the Wind Sport Sparrow Egg, as you may have guessed by the shape of it. Uh, very small backpack, super light. Uh, the beaner is there just because that's how I secure it to the in the uh, in the Jeep. Um, so I'll go through this, we'll go through the big one, and then you get the full picture. So, uh, in town, gear, first things first, some fence cutters. You could cut a small padlock with them, but I wouldn't count on cutting a big one with them. Some warm winter gloves. And then inside the bag, uh, let's start with the feed. So a couple of hot rods, a couple of Millennium bars. Those suckers are about 400 calories a piece. And then four two packs of hand warmers. I live in Calgary. It can get pretty cold here. If I'm on the move, this stuff isn't super cold weather gear, but if I'm moving, it's going to do me pretty good. This is a Grail water purifier. If you haven't seen one of these before, definitely check out some videos. There's tons of them out there. Um, this is basically a filter. That is a cup. You pour dirty water in here. You put this in here. Put the lid on it and slowly compress it. I think you're supposed to take about 15 seconds. And then you can drink the water that's in here. So... And it is a purifier, it takes out viruses as well. So, um, this is a very small personal survival kit. Has all the basic necessities, fire, um, fishing, there's some tin foil, some water purification tablets. Um, there's a small compass in here. There's a uh, small flashlight. Um, bunch of the basics. Um, for a little mini personal survival kit. Pair of socks, darn tough, merino wool. Merino wool long underwear, top and bottom. Merino wool neck tube, merino wool skull cap, beanie, toque, we call them here in Canada. Some Midweight fleece, top and bottom. Gore-Tex pants. This is a thin Gore-Tex, not a thick Gore-Tex. In uh, cold, cold, cold winter, I uh, have a thicker set that I use, but um, jacket, pants, etc. So that is the small in-town version. Housed in the Windsport Sparrow Egg. 
The extended version includes multi-cam poncho. Ponchos have a bunch of different uses, but uh, you can make shelters. But it's just a real easy way to camouflage yourself if you need to. Because multi-cam is pretty much anything you need around here. Um, that'll cover you for everything that we really have. I guess instead of except in the middle of a canola field in summer. But uh, in the main pouch here, this is my personal survival kit. So if I needed to ditch my bag, I can grab this and go. Grab the poncho and I'm going to be in pretty good shape actually. Um, at least to evade detection and uh, hopefully make a new plan. More a knife and a uh, multi-cam pack cover, waterproof. And that's all that lives in this outside pouch. Poncho should be easily accessed. That's why it just sits in this little stuff it pouch because normally my boots live in here. And this little pouch is um, a full-size orienteering compass. This is the Sunto MC2 Global. Side pouch number one, single walled steel canteen and a nesting cup. Fuel for my stove, little MSR rocket stove with a lighter. This thing will burn for about an hour straight. If you're using it intermittently, it'll burn longer because the tank gets pretty cold while you're using it, and then you get less burn time out of it. So, um, And it takes about four minutes to boil that container of, uh, of water. On the other side, really simple walk-in food. Daytrex emergency rations. This is 3,600 calories, so uh, call it 1,200 a day in small little 200 calorie bars, very easy to eat while you're moving so you don't have to stop to cook or anything like that. In the main pouch, when you do stop, there's a little bit of beef jerky. When you do stop, I have three Mountain House um, freeze-dried meals. All three there's two in there, one in there, are about 400 calories a piece. Um, so between that and the day treks, you're looking at about 1,600 calories, not including anything else I might have in the car, um, plus the snacks that you saw in the small bag. This is a 10 foot by 10 foot multicam tarp, and it is reflective. So I can open this up, throw it over myself in my bag, and sort my gear out. So if I need to get myself out of the rain quickly, literally squat down, throw it over myself, and then I can mess around in my bag without getting soaked. Uh, four tent pegs, very light aluminum, and 50 feet of paracord. So that is one shelter component. The other would be the uh, poncho that you saw earlier. And in my sleep system, which is right here, there is a Gore-Tex bivy bag and the patrol bag. This is the military MSS modular sleep system. So it does have a winter bag as well. Um, but this is good. I've used it down to minus 16 quite comfortably. Um, and it's pretty good. So, so that is that. Extra pair of um, work gloves. A small hygiene kit, including some body glide. Uh, it's got toothbrush, toothpaste, a couple bandanas, some wet wipes. These... Um, towel tablets or tablet towels or whatever they call them. You just add a little bit of water and get yourself a nice little towel. Um, 
this is a wool toque, watch cap, beanie, skull cap, whatever you want to call it, whatever you call it in your part of the world. Some ex officio underwear, just chafing socks, same as the body glides, another reason I got that. Um, merino wool neck tube, wool hat, and cotton shemug. And all fairly subdued colors, because, you know, why advertise? I have a lot of cross-country to do if I got to get home, so. Uh, my furthest port of call is Banff, which is about 100 miles away, and um, I cross a lot of country to get home from there, so. All right, so let's put this all back together. That is basically it in a nutshell, gang. Um, the extended kit obviously has... Like I said, shelter, food, a little bit of cooking, and a little bit of extra warmth. Um, the in-town one covers me for anything within the city, just outside of it. Anything that's basically going to be a day or less to get home. And uh, that is it. So uh, if you got any questions, certainly comment. Um, that is my kit. Obviously, your kit is dependent on your skill set. This kit, with my skill set, I'd be pretty comfortable. Um, if you don't have the skills, you need to keep a little bit of a bigger kit, probably. Uh, so that is the benefit of skills. You get to dump some gear. So, get out there, practice, hike with it. I used to have a 50-pound bag. That sucked. So now I've got one that is 25, and that's a heck of a lot easier to hump around. Uh, add that to the clothes that I'm going to be wearing because that is weight that you have to carry. And I'm about um, 40 pounds all in with my med kit. And I weigh 230 pounds. So that's pretty decent. Um, the backpack itself is about 10% of my body weight. Uh, some guys say 25 or even 30. That's a lot of gear. Um, I much prefer to go much lighter. But given where I live in the world, it gets a little bit too cold to go too light. So have got to have the balance. Um, if you look at the gray bearded green berets kit, he's got like 18 pounds all in, but he's in Florida. So a little bit of a different from Florida to Calgary. So anyway, take it easy. Have a great day.